You ever you heard of this uh, iPhone 11, Will? Never heard of it. No, I don't. Yeah, it's all new to me. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a hot new release. iPhone oh, okay. 11 Pro, Pro Max. Hot new was coming. It's coming in uh, Friday. Yeah. Yeah, 28th. two days from when we're filming this. Two days till iPhone 11. Uh, everybody else got their hands on it though, you know. Yeah. Like it's out there in the world, just not for us. We got to buy it from the store when it comes out. But uh, that has led to some interesting content, including most recently a teardown of the iPhone 11 Pro Max, in fact. And, you know, with these teardowns, they're kind of interesting. You get to see inside the device. You get to confirm certain specifications that, uh, of course, Apple publishes. And I guess you get to appreciate some of the engineering that goes into these devices. Now, this teardown, I don't know where it originated. It looks like maybe Thailand... Because obviously this is not, this product is not commercially available at the moment. The people who have it already are reviewers who have been given it by Apple, but not here. Is that Thailand, Vietnam? Where where are we, Will? What is that? Is it does it does it tell us where this came out of? Oh, I, Vietnam, Vietnam. I'm thinking in Vietnam. Yeah. Yep, the video is narrated in Vietnamese. So anyhow, someone in Vietnam they got their hands on the Pro Max version and they do a teardown. Very interesting stuff. What you discover is a rectangular-shaped logic board, even though there was an expectation to move back to an L-shaped logic board. From, oh, sorry, from an L-shape to a rectangular one. So anyway, it is rectangular logic board. The battery is the most interesting to me. It's huge. Yeah, it's like 25% bigger, right? The battery confirmed now just under 4,000 milliamp hours, resulting in... A fatter device, a heavier device, as you would imagine, with a bigger battery, very dense material. So a big battery for an iPhone, I think a lot of people are going to be excited about that, now confirmed via this teardown. I mean, some other stuff you get a closer look at in this video, you get to see the advanced camera layout now, a bunch of different camera modules, and they're quite substantial in size as well. The 10s Max battery was 3,174 milliamps, and now we're sitting at 3,969 milliamps on the newer version, which is kind of like uh, un-Apple. Like, well, maybe not un-Apple, but just uh, not typical for Apple to really... The focus for so long has been on making these devices thinner and lighter and sort of that wow factor when you're standing in the store or when uh, you get your hands on it for the first time. It was thought for a while that people were making their decisions based on those sort of superficial elements. At least that was the speculation that like people wanted thinner and lighter at all costs, even if it meant uh, slightly worse battery life. But then you had people like us in this space, in this spectrum, people in the tech segment saying we need we really want better battery life. Like these things are thin enough to begin with. That was the that was some of the conversation you'd get am amongst the tech crowd. You get amongst a crowd of people like Willie Do and his friends. And it'd be like, man, my battery keeps dying. I got to figure this out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think we'd see the day, but now here we go. We're living in a time where people have basically turned their smartphones into their computers. They're using them. They're very power hungry. And we're seeing enormous companies like Apple take note and deliver a 4,000 milliamp hour uh, smartphone. Now, it's important to note that's not the, the biggest battery available in a smartphone in 2019. It's just the biggest from Apple. But it is substantial nonetheless. And Apple claims they've made all sorts of uh, modifications to the software and optimizations to get tremendous battery life out of that 4,000 milliamp hours. Now, the, the thing's not out in the public. Yeah, we don't know exactly what that means. But nonetheless, this teardown, it grants you access to just how big that battery is in real life, just under 4,000 milliamp hours on an iPhone. Remember, that's the max version. Now, speaking of big batteries... Samsung unveiled a, a new device for the Indian market, M-series device. Now, we talked about this series in the past. This is now the S version of the M-series. We have the M30S, which is going to pack in a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. So they're taking, they're going down the same path here. The monster battery life. And I really think that... This transition has a lot to do with the smartphone becoming 
the uh, the main screen or the only screen for people. Like people are just increasingly not interacting with devices as much like this one in front of me, laptops, desktops. And now the phone is becoming the place you start the day, finish the day, eat lunch. It's the phone screen is the screen. And so manufacturers are recognizing that they can uh, uh, differentiate more effectively by saying, okay, this is the type of battery life you're going to get as opposed to just like look how thin this is. obviously battery technology advancing as well allowing this to take place now this uh, m30s is going to clock in at 8.9 millimeters thick and weigh 188 grams so even though it's got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery it's not like crazy fat or crazy heavy it's uh, gonna have an estimated battery life of 29 hours video playback 49 hours voice calls and 131 hours of music playback. Now, the one, the most interesting characteristic there, if it happens to be true, you know they're going to put their specification up high. If they're actually able to deliver uh, close to 30 hours of video playback, stop and think about that for a minute. I mean, I don't. When's the last time you watched 30 hours of video in a day? Now, as we know, video playback is one of the most intensive. Uh, usage scenarios for a smartphone. If it can do 30 hours of video playback, this might not even be a daily charge. Mm -hmm. This might be a couple day type of charge situation. So I am happy to see these enhancements in battery life from the big manufacturers. Now this M30S, we're not going to see it in North America, but it could be an indication of an attention from the world's two of the world's biggest smartphone manufacturers that we're going to start to see bigger battery counts on our smartphones, flagship or otherwise. Some other specs on this particular device, 6.4-inch S AMOLED Infinity U display. So it does have a tiny little U-shaped uh, notch in there, probably the smallest notch you can have if you're going to have a notch. Uh, similar, in fact, to like the pinhole cutout on the new Note series because it is symmetrical, although this is U-shaped, Infinity, who knows what they're calling all these things that, uh, these days. It'll also have 15-watt fast charging. So uh, there you have it. That's Indian exclusive, I think, for now, the M series. But uh, maybe we'll see the, we'll see some options like this emerge for other markets. 6,000 milliamps, so 4,000 milliamps on the Max iPhone, 6,000 milliamp hour on the, on the uh, M30S. What do you say, Will? Battery life? Mm -hmm. I think if they're going to, you know, upgrade battery, they can either just make it bigger right now or charge faster. Mm -hmm. And if uh, they can both, mm -hmm. it's great. You know, but at this point... You're going somewhere right now. Yeah. You, got, you got something for us here. Well, bigger is better. <laughs> Will he do? Ladies and gentlemen, will he do? No, he's right, though. If the it can last for over a day... Just right. media consumption, yeah. I mean, it's it's great. Right. I, I think um, with the weight, like you know, more productivity, uh, longer lasting. I think it's more. These are good. Than these weight. are good things. Yeah. For a guy like you, these are good things. Of course. What a time to be alive. Mm -hmm. Kind of said that in a bit. Oh yeah. I mean, we got a long battery life, uh -huh. and that's what a lot of people wanted. Mm -hmm. What do we do when these things have? We, uh, they get to a point. It's like three days battery. Like people don't put these things down. Mm -hmm. It's just. Maybe they watch this show more, so I'll be fine with that. Yeah, back to back. Anyhow, yeah, tremendous battery life and fast charging. Good good note from Will there, because on yesterday's episode, we were talking about that new, uh, was it Oppo or Oppo, Vivo? Oppo, Reno, Ace. A new, a new Oppo device, the Reno Ace. They were showcasing 65-watt charging, full charge, 4,000 milliamp hour in 30 minutes. 30 minutes, yeah. So it's like fast charging, gigantic batteries, we're juiced up. What a time to be alive. I'll say it again. Uh, sticking with these smartphone releases, launches, smartphone news. Uh, we have a Huawei Mate 30 Pro leak, another leak. I mean, we've seen leaks. Uh, there's an event that's going to take place in Munich, Germany. Uh, a little bit, I mean, it's a little bittersweet. I'll tell you more on that in a minute, but there's an event coming up shortly. And so the leaks are kind of flooding in. You've got the display waterfall, almost waterfall looking edge to the display. Uh, there's a notch there, but apparently they're housing the the more sophisticated face unlock tech in the larger in the larger notch. 
it's so here's the bittersweet component to it. Oh, I should just say real quick, it's going to have 5G modem in there. Obviously, some of the photos that have emerged showcase a emerald green color as well as like a lavender looking. They call it a cosmic purple. And the new camera layout, this circular thing that everybody seems to be going for, four camera modules uh, planted in there. It's actually, I mean, you can tell, Will. It's uh, It's got a nice kind of simple aesthetic going on, mm -hmm. uh, fairly symmetrical on the back as well. Anyhow, oh, just finish the specs. I'm going to finish the specs. 4,500 milliwatt, or sorry, 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 40 watt fast wired charging, 27 watt fast wireless charging and 40 megapixel cameras. So, okay, lots of action, top tier specs as you would expect from a Mate 30 Pro device. But here's the bittersweet component. Yes, the event is taking place in Germany, which is in Europe. But apparently, according to Let's Go Digital's insider source, the Mate 30 series won't be available in Europe will not be available in markets like the UK, France, and Germany, with the alleged reason being the absence of the Google Play services and apps due to the U.S. blacklisting. Mm. So you're going to have a $1,000 premium phone, presumably, and people, I mean, likely, the speculation, if, if you're working at Huawei, is like, if we don't have these services, then... How are we going to launch in Europe where people really want those services? People right. really want to use the place or they might have thought that launch won't be worthwhile. So maybe leading up to the event in Germany, they're hoping, fingers crossed, things get sorted out to a certain degree. That doesn't happen. So now you're hosting a launch event without Google services on a flagship uh, premium $1,000 plus device. Things things are getting squirrely. They're getting weird. Mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're starting to see the, the, the consequences. We're starting to see the outcomes of this of this trade ban taking uh, manifesting in a physical product and a launch and a really high profile device at that in the form of the Mate 30, Mate 30 Pro set to launch. So I guess you're having a launch in Europe for a device that's really only going to sell in a big way in China. Mm -hmm. That's kind of strange in yeah. my estimation. Uh, you would think that they're probably also planning a Chinese launch event, which would make a lot more sense for a device for that market. So it's almost like a wasted launch event, or maybe they're trying to drum up some kind of uh, some kind of backlash, some kind of uh, community dialogue, an uprising amongst people that are like, "Hey, we want this thing to get sorted out uh, b because we can't get it in Germany. We want it in Germany. The events in Germany. I don't know, but to be clear, Germany and UK and the UK represent and France for that matter. Those are the biggest markets in Europe for smartphones. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that Huawei's not going to launch the device there is going to going to obviously make some people upset in those markets. We'll see if things change. That's the speculation based on the insider information available to us now. But you can get a real good look at the phone based on the leaks that exist that are out there now. You see the colors. You see the layout. You see the spec sheet. It's all out prior to the actual event taking place. That's just 2019 with smartphones. We're seeing it all beforehand, but no Google Play. What what about you, Will? Could you consider a device like this, and you just go ahead and throw your own throw your own stuff on there? APKs. Could you get gritty like that? Could you get grimy in the Android space? Yeah, I would give it a shot. Guy like you. It's it's a really nice phone. Guy like it seems you. Seems like it has a solid specs here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're just a guy. I, I would at, definitely use this. You're a guy. You're at home. I am. Yes. And you just got your APKs locked and loaded. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's always in the comments, by the way, when, when we talk about this. People are like, I who cares? APK, baby. Who cares? Launcher, baby. Yeah. Bootloader, baby. You ever seen those comments? They go exactly like that. And I mean, people are right. Look, I oh. had an appetite for it at a certain point in my life. I'm less busy. Yeah. I, that stuff, that kind of stuff might turn me on at one point in my life. APK talk. But there is a security risk. You There's, know, we can't auto update. You got to download the latest APK. And uh, it could be a hassle. Willie you know. do. Yeah. Willie do. Security risk, Willie do. The chef. <laughs> you heard it here. So yeah. be careful. But yeah, I think at a certain point in my life, I would have approached something like that. It could have even been exciting at a certain point in your life mm -hmm. where you're like, I'm going I'm to I'm be so obscure. I'm going to be sitting here in a Western market 
they tell me I, they tell me not to have the phone, so that's the one I want. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like don't tell me what I can and can't have. Yeah. And then I'll be loading Google services, and then I'll be in the APK zone, and I'll be walking around with my friends, and I'm like, yeah, I did it all. What you mean, ban? Your phone gets hacked immediately. Yeah, well, that might happen too. Yeah. But that's all part of the gig, right? That's all part of the fun. Yeah. Then you gotta then you do you 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 re-image it. You're like now you're loading some next thing. And I mean that's part of fun. Kirk, you've been through a series, you've been through a period of your life like that. Yeah, everybody had that. Everybody everybody had that period in their life, and you learn a lot through that period. So no hate. Like, man, if you're an enthusiast and you have the time for it, you want to make it work, go for it. But it's obviously not gonna be everyone, which is probably the reason why Huawei decided. We're not going to bother launching in Western Europe, considering the fact that we've got this uh, restriction in place. Now, this one's interesting. You know, you know, I'm still a laptop guy. Will I'm using laptops. You know, mm. I'm out here. I'm in the world. I'm using laptops. Mm. Getting work done. I like keyboards. Am I old school? Maybe, maybe. But there's cool stuff happening in laptops, as far as I'm concerned. What's the alternative? What do you mean? Well, I'm just guy? saying, like human beings, they moved on to. Apple wants you to believe that the iPad is the new com could be a com computing platform and right. smartphones are enormous. Galaxy Folds exist. I hear you. Uh, Galaxy Notes have decks. Yeah. You see how it's going? Like, there's like I don't know. There's just a movement to kind of, kind of whatever the next format of computing is. And there's something about a laptop since the form factor's been around now for so long. There's like a lot of people are just like, well, I don't know. There's not too much exciting happening, but. In my estimation, maybe it's subtle, but I've noticed improvements on these things. I, I start to notice the fit and finish. The displays have gotten nicer. You know, we had the display dispute the other day. Was that you and I? Where, like, I, you, I was like, look at these thumbnails. Remember that? Oh, yeah, with the color. Um, yeah, because you got the HDR. You don't have the HDR. And, like, we're like, w which display is showcasing it properly? And you're on a MacBook Pro and... And uh, it was just like my display was uncovering all kinds of weird discrepancies and terribleness in the thumbnails. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You remember? And Will was like, it can't be true. Will was like, well, I can't. Will was like, I can't see it on my display. So <laughs> that was him. That's exactly how I saw. Yeah, that was him. He was sipping a cup of tea and he was wearing a beret and eating a baguette. So I'm French now? Yeah, in that moment. <laughs> so anyway, we were just, I was talking like, man, stuff is still happening in laptops. And yeah. one area where I still think it's, you know what, I'm getting back around to the beginning part of the conversation. One area where I think we could really see some coolness is in battery life. Mm. These are huge devices. Like where you could put a, you know how it goes. Well, you're an engineer. You just slap a big battery in there. So. Yeah. Uh, I've been the the problem with these nice displays on these laptops is you start going up to these to these exotic resolutions, 4K and beyond, and you're using battery, dude. I'll tell you what, you get that brightness going at that at those big resolutions, you start using that battery. I'll tell you what, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, 90 hertz, 100. You get your hertz, hertz going. Yeah, you get your res going. You get your hertz going. You start you start sucking the juice. You see how it goes, well. So anyhow, a lot of people, the enthusiasts, will actually spec down their unit to like a lower, like a business type user, travel type user will actually be like, I don't want the high res unit, right. even if they got the money for it, because they'll say, I'm going to prioritize battery life. And if you get like the 1080 version of a lot of these laptops, you actually see substantially more battery life because you're pushing less pixels. Same argument can be made for smartphones like is it really worth it to go beyond a particular resolution? Do you get the benefit back in in pixel experience, is that enough to offset the impact on battery life? That's the question that's out there. Anyhow, Intel, they're like, we're still out here. We're Intel. We make, we're doing processors. We don't advertise as much as we used to, but like, we're still, we're making processors and laptops and we like ultra books and we're doing stuff. That's Intel. That's their official uh, press release. Yeah. I just read it word for word. It's their slogan. We're out here. We're Intel computers. They still Computer exist. Yeah. yeah. We sold our mobile stuff and modems and all that to Apple. So, like, laptops are still cool. Trust us. We're Intel. Chips. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wafers. Wafers. Silicone. And, and yeah, and white outfits. Yeah. They're still. So, anyway, 
they came out with this program. Wow, off track. Oh, holy moly. I blame Kirk for that. He was encouraging it. He was over there doing a song and dance quietly. He was encouraging it. Uh, HP Elite Dragonfly is a Project Athena laptop that lasts over 24 hours on a charge. There we are. We got to it. The important part. Apologies for uh, the off track nature of the discussion there. We're having too much fun, obviously. What is it? A Wednesday. It's a fun Wednesday. Uh, so there's this thing called Project Athena. Intel put out this uh, this specification, this Athena-ready guideline for like what an Ultrabook should be able to deliver to be considered ultimate mega Ultrabook status. And the way it breaks down is that an Athena-ready laptop should be Light and slim, powered by Intel's latest chips. It should support uh, all-day battery life. It should feature all-day battery life, fast charging support, an always-on internet connection, including 4G, instant on functionality, and certain AI features. Uh, so kind of a, a, a feature set, something you would want in an Ultrabook, but where Intel can say, look, this one meets our criteria. What is that? I mean, Dolby does stuff like that, like kind of like a certification program, yeah. but they're just calling it, for now, I guess, they're calling it Athena Ready. But the cool thing here is it puts an emphasis on user stuff. Like it puts an emphasis on not how big is the battery, but like what does it deliver in terms of actual usage? Can you get 24 hours out of it? Also, the always-on connection thing, I think, has the potential to be big for laptops, even though... It's not the standard at the moment. Most people's laptops you bump into, they're not featuring always on or LTE connections. But it's kind of a nice idea. You pop it open, you're always connected. You're not searching for a Wi-Fi. We start to think about it more like a smartphone type mm -hmm. of device. So anyhow, HP is one of the first to the party with this Elite Dragonfly. Now, it's important to note this device is a business-oriented device. It's a 13-inch convertible two-in-one style laptop but it's it's like got all kinds of cool titles and attributes associated with it it's gonna be the world's first business convertible with uh what is it where is it here ocean bound plastics <laughs> no that wasn't the one i was looking for the world's lightest there you go the world's lightest compact business convertible but like they put it all <clears throat> they put in all that stuff like, they don't say the world's lightest 13-inch convertible. They say compact business convert. Like, I, what? Mm. I don't know. What makes it business? What is the business part of it? It's black. Is it, uh, then it's business. Like, what makes, you know? Mm. When does something go full business, Well, is there, uh, I think when they're called HP. You know what they're I think? Business. When If there's a briefcase involved, you're... Oh, yeah, definitely. It's business. Yeah. That's... Yeah, you like an old school briefcase. Yeah, if there's a briefcase involved, what, dress shoes. No. Dress shoes on a weekday. That's business. Mm. You see how that goes? The uh, handkerchief <laughs> here. The, no, uh, a handkerchief. No, because uh, a with certain, the dress shirt in a certain year, like maybe Mad Men style. Yeah. But now that's I don't know. You're going to a wedding or something. Mm -hmm. You got the the handkerchief going on. But. Uh, yeah, business. Anyway, this one is uh, is is very lightweight, obviously. I think it comes in at under one kilogram in some configurations. It's also the world's first notebook or the highest screen-to-body ratio in a 13-inch business convertible. 86% screen-to-body ratio. Did you just do a kilogram-to-pound conversion rapidly there, Willie Do? Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. 2.2 .2 pounds. That's 2.2 .2 pounds. That's pretty amazing for a 13-inch business laptop. Honestly, I think the way these laptop manufacturers use the business des designation is uh, from a robust. Like, is it is it durable? Is it a tough? Can it can it live up to the demanding criteria of a road warrior business type dude? Do you throw it in a bag? Is there aluminum involved? That's how they use it. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. That's cool. So two point two pounds for a for a, a tough laptop. That's pretty amazing. Thirteen inch. Uh, but the most important and interesting spec is the battery life. So they're claiming, this is incredible, 
They are claiming it will pull off 24-hour and 30-minute battery life on a single charge when, when you spec it out with a 1-watt full HD display, Intel Core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD. So that's just the spec they chose for the particular test. The number came from MobileMark 2014, so an actual uh, benchmark tool, not just like from their lab, but like an actual benchmark tool you can download and try for yourself. They gave it a relatively light workload test. So that's important to note, a relatively light workload test. So you assume that's like some browsing. It's uh, your screen is not full brightness, uh, maybe a little video here and there, some documents. That to me is a light workload. But still, 24 hours, 30 minutes, I mean, I wish. Don't you wish, Will? 24-hour battery life, Will. Guy like you. It's great. On a laptop. Is this entire episode, is this the battery life episode of Lou Later? It might seem like It's it, just yeah. Willie Do and Lou uh, rant and rave and riff, in fact, on the battery life, the state of battery life in 2019. This is actually a, a forum. It's a referendum. It's a uh, state of the union. Mm -hmm. That's actually what this is. I didn't intend on doing that. It also features fast charge, able to recharge the battery to 50% capacity in 30 minutes. This, to me is Intel saying laptops can be smartphones. Laptops are cool like smartphones. Laptop, laptops can do smartphone things mm -hmm. like crazy battery life and fast charge and LTE. Like we can talk about those things too. Right. Just because we're laptops, doesn't mean we can't talk about that stuff. We're cool too. And, uh, and I think that's the right move. One charger, fast charger. I love it. So anyway, I'm, I'm actually interested in this product. I'd like to check it out myself. Uh, I don't know when it comes out. It's not out yet. But uh, it's, it's exciting times in technology. You're well aware. And uh, uh, to stay on the exciting uh, side of technology, my favorite podcast app, Pocket Casts, is now free. And I paid for it. I paid for the premium version. And this is I use this on all my devices, Pocket Casts. I don't know what these guys over, over here are using, but I find it to be... Uh, just a very seamless experience that I can take with me on multiple devices with very little setup. I just sign in on some next device and boom, all my stuff is there and ready to go, my subscriptions and so forth. And it's, it's platform independent. It works on everything. And so it's just very exciting. It's now free, but in a weird kind of way. Like in the past, you would pay for it uh, to get the, the premium features. It still kind of works like that, but the premium version of it is only going to be giving you online web browser listening and cloud storage. So you can store your podcast downloads in the cloud. So it's like you don't really need those features. So it is basically free unless you want to pay for it. If you do choose to pay for the cloud storage, it'll cost you 99 cents a month. I know nobody really wants another subscription, but 99 cents a month is pretty cheap as far as subscriptions go if you are some sort of a power users. Users. One of those power users. Yeah. If you if you are a power users. I don't even what is that accent? I don't even. <laughs> Anyway, uh, starting September 18th, that's right now, that's today, Pocket Cast can be downloaded for free. I don't get a refund, but no. apparently since I paid for the online listening, the web browser listening in the past, that means, and that was $9, I'm apparently going to get three months free? What do I get free? It was listed in here. Uh, if you previous person, you get three free years of Pocket Cast Plus. So the old users are getting a lot of love. I get three free years of the premium version. I can keep my podcasts in the cloud, downloaded, everything synced up. It's very beautiful. Look, if you're looking for a podcast app or you're uh, unhappy with your current one, I mean, what do you have to lose now? You can give Pocket Casts a try and see if it's your favorite too. It is my favorite. And also remember, you can get this show in audio form. A lot of people don't know this. Mm -hmm. This show right here, you can get it in audio form if you want to via Pocket Cast or any other podcast app. And if you like it, you can leave us a review. That's what people who have podcasts say. They, right. say, they say that. If you listen to podcasts, they say, they say, and if you like this show, do us a favor. Leave us a review. It really helps out a bunch. Mm. That's what they say, so I just said it. Now, I said it because other people say it because obviously it's a good thing to say because mm -hmm. then your podcast, then, you're, then you have a good podcast. 
five stars. Then yeah, then you have a, then p other people say, okay, that's a good podcast because other people said it's a good podcast, and now I want to listen to that podcast. But also, it's an algorithmic thing. If you get a certain number of reviews, it goes up the charts, and then All people right. who are just they're eating the baguette and whatnot, and they're like, what's my next podcast? I don't know. They're they're, they're avid podcast listeners. And then they say to themselves, I'm going to hit the charts real quick because I need something to do while I'm eating my baguette. Yeah. And they find us on the list and they become a listener. The show explodes. We do more shows. Willie Do stays employed. It's all, it's incredible how it all mm -hmm. operates there. So I don't know how this pocket cast thing got us there, but you can listen to the audio and you can leave a review if you like us. If you don't, uh, should they still leave a review? No, leave it alone. Yeah. I mean, there's no need sure, why not? if you don't. And also, if you don't like it, I mean, what are we... It's a bit late. We're deep in the show right now. <laughs> yeah. It's it's late for you. Got this whole set. We're it's yeah we yeah we're doing yeah we're going we're going. So I don't know if you don't like it. Uh, maybe just go watch something else if you don't like. It's fine. Yeah, it's cool. Like it's no pressure. No pressure whatsoever. Last up for me, uh, Apple's VP of Communications is leaving the company. Well, now uh, you know why this happened, right? It's it's uh, he's leaving the company actually because. They because he personally didn't invite us to the event, right? To the latest Apple event because he's the communications guy, he's in charge of all that. Tim found out because me and Tim are tight, obviously. We have our own ongoing, like, bro, we have our, on, our own ongoing dialogue. Him? We meet up twice a year, uh, you know, we're at a cafe with a small circular table because it's intimate. Me and Tim, we talk about the upcoming iPhone. No, it doesn't happen, but uh, and this isn't the reason that he's leaving the company. But, uh, yeah, this dude's been there for 16 years. Steve Dowling, he was previously in the PR department. This dude was there for the original iPhone communications. You, you understand? Mm. He would, at some point, be responsible for all the PR fiascos. He would have been very angry when Ben Gate took place. Yeah. He would have been in the emergency room, like, yeah. slapping things. So Throwing chairs. So, shout out to, shout out to Steve. A, 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 a shout out. You no, know, I mean shout out to to Steve for going through all of that. That must have been a nightmare. Can oh, you yeah, yeah. Can you imagine Respect. internally? It's a huge Respect. company, right? And everyone's looking to you for answers. They're like, "What? It's bending? Say something. Do something. Whatever mm -hmm. it might be." And there's other been other situations that he would have lived through, like Antenna Gate. And when you're the communications guy, you need to approve right. the statements that are going out. And to be the communications guy at Apple is like that's a tough. That's right. a tough gig, man, because yeah. the eyeballs are on you. The headlines are flying, and everyone's looking at you like, we're the billion-dollar guys. Mm -hmm. We're the trillion-dollar guys. They're looking around. They see the briefcase. You're definitely business. Look at the image on the, on the Recode article. Well, I mean, that is business. You never saw yeah. business like that. He's got a full head of hair. After, it's gray, uh, though. 16 years. It's gray, though. It grayed out. Yeah, but it's slicked back, you know. You're saying he's looking good. Yeah. So I, you don't think he's too stressed. No, he would have been bald, right? <laughs> I don't know. With all the stress, just losing all that. I hair. think you can go either. You can either. You can either. The hair can change color, or you lose it. One or the other. I guess so. Yeah. It goes one way or the other, or both. Or both. Yeah. That's both the worst is the case ultimate scenario. ultimate stress level. Yeah. Gray and bald. Yeah. And half dead. Well, we're all destined for it anyhow. But uh, you're right. He looks okay considering the 16 years in that tough position he was there for steve jobs he was there for the original iphone he writes a note to the entire staff which i guess i don't know leaks out or maybe they don't care that it's out in public here uh what does he say to the company he says something very nice after 16 years at apple countless keynotes product launches and the occasional pr crisis shout out uh shout out steve Apologies for the PR crisis. I know I was responsible for at least one, possibly more. I had the beauty, the beauty mode one too. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I feel like, I feel like me and Steve now, after it's all said and done, we get a beer or something. Yeah. Shake you hands, know, like you it's know. It's all over. It's. I just, you know, it's like at the end of a hockey game. You, you're going back and forth. It's all you understand what's going on, sort of, but it's still kind of a headache. The guy, he's giving you a hard time. Mm -hmm. in the in the game but you shake hands at the end yeah. it's a key component in the entire transaction you shake hands at the end you're both hockey players at the end of the day mm. you see how that goes Willie? do mm. it's a very important part of the game but he says uh he says a couple of other nice things he says look 
Uh, after this most recent release, I feel confident in the team. I'm paraphrasing. I feel confident in the team, and uh, they're going to keep moving forward. He doesn't say he's taking another job. He says he's going to chill for a bit. Like I said, high-stress situation. Guy's got boatloads of cash. I'm speculating. He's got a VP in his title. It's a big company, so he's got some cash kicking around. So he takes a break. He drinks a margarita. He sits on a beach. And uh, he doesn't think about smartphones too seriously for a bit. Yeah. So maybe he'll be working with Johnny Ive. Oh, he'll go find Johnny. Yeah. He go find Johnny uh, with love or from what? love. From love, love. Some love. I love. We yeah. love smartphones. Technology. Lou later. That's another episode.